Good day, fellow Zimbabweans. My name is Edzai Cornelius Shobro, and I thought it would be a good idea just to come up with a video, an end of year video, where we just uh, reflect on uh, 2019 and say, how can we as a country move forward uh, in 2020 and beyond? I am not a politician. I am not an economist or anything special. I'm just a human being, a citizen, of Zimbabwe who would like to see his country perform better uh, politically, economically, socially and in all aspects of, uh, of life. So I do not usually comment on political things but I thought you know what uh, if I don't play my part who else uh, do I expect to play the part. So we have to all come together uh, with a unity of purpose, with uh, uh, the love of the country at heart uh, and try and find ways of solving these problems that we should be solving as citizens of Zimbabwe. So today I have five points that I believe um, these factors or these constructs which have other variables, driving variables below them should be able at least to kickstart the discussion and, 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 the, and the momentum towards rebuilding this country that used to be great, but right now uh, is in the doldrums of, uh, of, of, economy, of economic activity and, and, and social cohesion. So my five points, I will, I will say them out and then I hope that I'll get a reaction from, uh, from all of you to say how can we achieve these things because I do not have the answers. I am just uh, putting five points uh, uh, there to you and saying, guys, what do you think of these five points? How can we use these five points to actually um, develop the country? So the first one that I have is participation in the creative process. So participation in the creative process is not just about um, creating as an entrepreneur, as an artist. But creating, having the freedom to self-express in any way, you know, whether you are a comedian who is doing political satire, you should be able to do that without fear of, uh, of violence against you. Whether you are an opposition party member or an, uh, a non-profit organization uh, officer who is out there expressing uh, what they are seeing, their vision of the truth, you know, it should be allowed in a country. Whether it's the president expressing his perspective, we should give him the, the space and latitude to express himself and let there be um, a contest of ideas so that uh, we can all move forward. So as long as we do not allow our people to be creative, whether it's in communications, whether it's in product development, whether it's in uh, uh, any sphere of life, basically, then we are doomed as a society. So let us foster an environment for creativity and innovation uh, in as much as it, we might not like it or in as much as it, is, uh, it looks like it's against us or even if it is against us, as long as we uh, we foster that environment of creativity. So number one for me is participation in the creative process because without creativity, we are not going to have uh, entrepreneurs like Strive Masiwa and others that have made it, you know. So let us try and foster that creativity, right? Then the second one is protection of private property. Now, if I am creative, right? and I'm innovative and I've come up with a product or I've come up with, uh, with, uh, with a new way of uh, distributing products or communicating or whatever it is that I've come up with, I should be able to, through intellectual property, through uh, means to be able to protect that so that I can be acknowledged for my work, you know? If I have a farm, if I have a house, if I have money in the bank, I should be able to uh, to be at ease, right? To know that I can be creative and 
I can accumulate property and that property will be safeguarded because pr protection of private property is essential. It's non-negotiable, right? So as long as we have uh, uncertainty and lack of trust in the system and uh, people not sure whether their property is actually protected, then we are going nowhere as a country. No one would want to put their money in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment like that. And no one would want to uh, uh, sweat and be creative in such an environment. And um, this is why local investors and international investors are not putting their money because there's no confidence in the system and we have to uh, fundamentally change the way we view private property and its protection then the third one is the accumulation of wealth the accumulation of wealth is a god-given right right it's a consequence of the creative process and then suing uh protection of private property so if no one is protecting your your property how can you accumulate it you know you know, how can you accumulate wealth so we have to make sure that we give space and we encourage accumulation of wealth accumulation of wealth is not a vice but a virtue we were born and brought into this world to multiply and let us be able to multiply, do not attack uh, people who are wealthy because they are wealthy, you know? Let us all strive to be wealthy, right? Excuse the pun. Let us all strive to be wealthy in our own regard. Wealth is not just about money. Wealth is happiness, wealth is health, wealth is anything that you define, uh, uh, your pre-considered uh, goals that you, you came up with, right? So it's important that we uh, allow for the accumulation of wealth, but that will never happen if there's no uh, protection of property. And if there's no protection of property, then creation will not happen or people will create elsewhere. That's why you find a lot of Zimbabweans all over the world and edifying other economies uh, except their own because the environment is not conducive for the creation of value. Then the fourth one is the caring for the needy. Um, I mean, charity is important and we have this misconception that you have to be a billionaire in order to to be charitable but everyone has a part to play every citizen has a part to play and this culture of, of charitability should be uh, encouraged from a young age where everyone uh, in their own right whether they're helping their neighbor uh, in the poorest of poorest neighbors or in the richest of richest neighbors they should be able to uh, to have that thrust towards charity where philanthropy should not just be uh, a prism of the rich but everybody should be a philanthropist and therefore that means we can assist the, those that cannot help themselves in our society then the fifth one the fifth and last one is uh, limited government. It's important that uh, we do not have a centralized decision-making system where we, we have uh, people that become too powerful, right? So decentralization of decision-making and autonomy, which is, uh, in other words, freedom of the citizens should be encouraged. So let us all as citizens who give power, so we delegate uh, our power, our decision-making power to to those that we appoint in office, right? They work for us. They are civil servants. They work for us. And as long as we still have the culture of the guy in government is chef, then uh, we are going nowhere. We have to uh, make sure that we exercise our power as citizens, whether it's through voting or through referendums or any other legal mechanisms that are there to be able to make sure that those that we've put into power uh, into office are accountable to us and have our interest at heart and if they are not doing what they're supposed to do then they should be shipped out you know so let's let's understand our power as citizens and let's not give too much power to the office bearers uh, because it is our power anyway 
the power is in the individual, you and I, and a limited government. Uh, uh, as we know, governments, government inefficiency is not something that is new, new out there. So let us, uh, as entrepreneurs, let us be proactive, let us help government uh, achieve um, its mandate, which its mandate being uh, to set an environment that is conducive for us to thrive. Basically, that's why government exists, to be able to maintain order and peace and environment that allows every citizen uh, to, to flourish, right? So I'll do a recap of my five points that I believe that if we look at each of them seriously, then hopefully our future is going to be bright if we take it seriously. So number one is let us uh, give space and room for participation in the creative process. Number two, a protection of private property is non-negotiable. Number three, the accumulation of wealth is a birthright of every citizen in the country. Then number four, let us care for the needy. You, we don't need to be billionaires to care for the needy. Whatever little that you have, you can share with your neighbor. And then the last one is, uh, let us have a limited government. Let us um, decentralize decision making to avoid uh, people that are too powerful uh, and end up abusing uh, the very citizens that put them in the office. So these are my little points that I believe um, are very general, almost uh, common sense, but we are not doing that. So in as much as it's common sense, we are failing at common sense. So Zimbabwe, I hope you have a beautiful uh, 2020 and beyond. And uh, let us work together. Um, and a shout out to all the people that are working day and night to make sure that we have uh, an amazing country. Thank you, Zimbabwe.